I've got six amazing alternatives to discontinued and or hard to find fragrances and I'm going to tell you about them coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. It's Sebastian. We're talking about alternatives to long sought after discontinued fragrances or some hard to find fragrances as well. I've got some great alternatives for these fragrances that are discontinued and are hard to find. And we're going to go ahead and get started right away. I'm excited to tell you about this first one because I've been a fan of Mugler for the longest time. And Mugler Amen Flankers were some of the best designer fragrances ever. I absolutely, absolutely love them. But this fragrance launched around 2015 and I, it was an instant love. It was so different but keeping the DNA of Mugler Amen. This is Amen Ultra Zest, this one right here. I think it got discontinued around 2018. And then they had the Crypto Mint out as well. But it's been a long time since uh, I've put my nose on this. But I put it on recently. I was like, wow, this is so, so good. But too bad it's not out there. And I know a lot of you guys have been asking me where to find a bottle. Sadly, it's not easy to find. Have you been able to get a bottle? But I've got a really great alternative for you here. This is from a house called Athena. This is Neon Orange. Also not very expensive. So if you've been hunting down a bottle of Ultra Zest, you can get Ultra Zest here in Neon Orange. And what I like about Ultra Zest, it's the Blood Orange Tangerine edition of the citrusy kind of sunshiny citruses with the Mugler DNA, which included things like patchouli, coffee, and uh, vanilla and things like that. So this has coffee in addition to the blood orange and tangerine, cinnamon, ginger, patchouli, vanilla, tonka, black pepper, and mint. And it seems like Athena has given us a really, really great alternative to Ultra Zest, or maybe it's a dupe, but it smells really, really close to the original. Their notes are blood orange, coffee, mint, malt, cinnamon, patchouli, cedarwood, vanilla, and tonka beans. It's a great fragrance. It's like Mugler fragrances were some of my favorites. But sadly, they're not doing anything with the men's line anymore. What the heck is happening? Somebody recently came to me and also told me that they're relaunching the, the Le Less Exceptions collection. Is that true? Like somebody was looking for a bottle of Over the Musk and I said, I'm sorry, I don't have any options for you except for some alternatives. But this is a really, really great alternative to Mugler's Amen Ultra Zest. If you've been looking for it, please, uh, you know, Get it now here with this fragrance because it'll satisfy you if you're on the hunt for Ultra Zest. It's a great sunshiny take on, I, I should say sunshiny because to me when I wear it, it's just a blast of sunshine. It's just really, really uplifting and happy and it's the blood orange and tangerine that's in the original and then of course with just the blood orange in the neon orange. Are you guys familiar with Athena? I've recommended some of their fragrances before. But I recommend some of their fragrances because you can't find the original. And again, Ultra Zest was one of my favorite Amen flankers. But Neon Orange does a great job of uh, reinterpreting Ultra Zest by Mugler. Let me know if you're a fan of uh, Athena fragrances. Let me know if you're a fan of the original Ultra Zest. It was a really, really big love for me. It was co-created by Jacques Houclier, who was basically in charge of a lot of the Amen fragrances along with Quintam Biche and Quintam Biche, you know, that was uh, launched when he wasn't a known name. Uh, and so now he's uh, such a big per perfumer, very well known. And so this was one of his earlier f creations. And then I think he went on to create uh, Pure Tonka for Mugler. Maybe he even created Crypto Mint. I can't quite remember. But again, looking for a great alternative to Mugler's Amen Ultra Zest. It's got to be neon orange. And I think since, you know, spring, summer is around the corner, this is going to be such a great fragrance to wear because it's very fresh and citrusy. But it also has substance in the base. You know, those warmer notes, deeper notes. So it starts off fresh and citrusy, but it eventually becomes something substantial when it's drying down. Speaking of Athena fragrances, it seems like they have a little pricier collection as well in addition to the f bottles like this for Neon Orange. This is Abha from Athena. One of my favorite, favorite fragrances from Athena. And the reason I like this one is because it's so, so darn close to 
Raja Parfum's Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, which was one of my favorite fragrances from this line. I don't know why this fragrance got discontinued so quickly. I have a full review of it on the channel. In fact, we did a giveaway of this one when I reviewed it for the brand and via a blog I used to work with. But Kingdom of Saudi Arabia features notes of oud, strawberry, banana, leather, cotton candy, mandarin, and plums. And it was a very interesting concoction with the notes. It's super, super sexy. There's a muskiness about it. It's got these kind of Middle Eastern uh, stylings to it, but with some sweetness and more of a playful, you know, notes in there like the strawberries and the banana and the cotton candy. So it makes for a very interesting combo of more, you know, Middle Eastern kind of notes, but the oud and everything else that's in here against the kind of more playful, you know, sweet kind of candied notes. But it's gone. Sadly, it's gone. I don't know if you guys have gotten your nose on Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Again, it's one of my favorite, favorite fragrances from Raja Parfums. It came and went too quickly. Maybe there wasn't a market for it. But Abha is a really, really great alternative for it. See, I've, I've worn so much of it. I'm keeping this one because this is all I have of uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. But this one, it's less expensive. It's probably around 100 something, somewhere around 100 to 120. Maybe it's around 150. I'm not 100% on the price. But man, it's such a great, great fragrance. This features notes of oud, leather, strawberry, cotton candy, banana, cinnamon, raspberry, plums, and apples. But wow. It's such a great remake of the original. You can savor your original bottle of the original fragrance and just wear the alternative for it because it smells fantastic. And this one garners me compliments. Honestly, it garners me compliments. It's a really, really great fragrance. That's what I like about it. It is super, super sexy. If you like sexy fragrances, you've got to get your nose on this. You, you can get your nose on the original if you can find a bottle but the alternative is much less expensive and super amazing fragrance. I love it. The only thing about Raja Parfum's Kingdom of Saudi Arabia that it does remind me of Parfum de la Nuit number no. three a little bit, not a lot. And again, you've got an alternative here for it. So it's a great alternative. Again, great alternatives from a house that has kind of different collections, a less expensive collection here in these bottles, more kind of luxurious collection with these bottles. And these are not very expensive, both of them. And I think they'll satisfy if you're looking for alternatives to Kingdom of Saudi Arabia or Mugler's Amen Ultra Zest. Let me know if you've bought fragrances from Athena and what you think about it. Put a comment down below so I can find out. So this one keeps coming up quite a bit. I keep getting asked where you can buy a bottle of YSL's Baby Cat, it's still not selling in the States and I don't even know if it's ever going to sell in the States. It is definitely being sold in Europe. I found it, discovered it, bought it, used it, really enjoy it. And of course, it's not the fragrance that came first. What came first is still selling and easier to get and they are sold here locally in San Francisco at a perfume shop called Ministry of Scent. The fragrance I'm talking about is Vanna Gloria. I always recommend it as a great alternative to Baby Cat if you can't get Baby Cat. But again, it's also less expensive than Baby Cat. So Baby Cat is that great combination of vanilla, olibanum, black pepper, saffron, cedarwood, suede accord, LME resin, and pink pepper. And remember, it came a year after Vanna Gloria launched. Vanna Gloria, on the other hand, is vanilla, olibanum, black pepper, saffron, cedarwood, suede accord, LME resin, pink pepper. Very similar fragrances. There might be some minor differences, but... Both of them I really, really love. In fact, I recently featured it in a video of over 5,000 bottles in this studio here. And these are some of the fragrances I wear quite a bit of. I really, really love this DNA. I think Fran Francois, what am I saying, Francois? I think uh, Dominic Ropion created one of the best DNAs out there. In fact, I enjoy it a lot more now than something like Portrait of a Lady. Don't get me wrong. I really enjoy Portrait of a Lady, but I think this DNA is amazing and a great DNA that, uh, you know, Dominic Ropian has created. So if, as I said, if you're not in the States, then you might have an easier time getting Baby Cat. But if you are in the States or you have another way to get Laboratorio Olfativo, Vanna Gloria, then do try the Vanna Gloria. Again, they are sold here locally in San Francisco at Ministry of Scent. I have it linked in the info box. If you're looking for a bottle, I think it's $180 for 100 ml, and the 125 ml of the Baby Cat is around $280. But again, it's not found, it's not findable here. It is available in Europe, but sadly, it's not selling here in the States. Anyway, 
I think it is sold in Canada, those of you that are in Canada, because I hear from folks sometimes they say it's back now selling it in Canada. It was removed. So I don't know what their marketing and retail you know, plans are with YSL and L'Oreal, but uh, at one point, point it was available readily in Canada, then it was removed and apparently it's back now. I'm not 100% sure though. So this one has come up quite a bit as well on the channel, not as much as the previous fragrances, but this is a fragrance called Bulgari Black. You guys familiar with this one? Did you wear this? This is one of the latest version of, versions of Bulgari Black. It launched in the late 90s and it had a kind of a bottle that was twistable and it would kind of spray through it. Then they changed that uh, design and then came out with a cap that it's actually removable. So as you can see right here, this, this rubbery kind of thing is how this fragrance kind of smelled. It was a rubbery, leathery, smoky kind of a smell against vanilla and green tea or a tea note. So it was a really great fragrance, really enjoyed it. One of the best from Bulgari. Bulgari does great tea fragrances. In fact, they have a whole collection of tea fragrances, but this was created by Anik Minardo and she did a great job with this one. Sadly, it got discontinued just before the pandemic started or somewhere around there. But there is a great alternative for it. It's from the house of Prada. It's Luna Rosa Black. Bulgari Black was a unisex fragrance. Bulgari, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Prada Luna Rosa Black is a male targeted release, but a woman can totally pull it off. They're not identical, but this is a great, great alternative for Bulgari Black. This is a lot powderier, whereas the Bulgari Black has that tea, so it's a bit more syrupier. But in the end, it's very, very, uh, you know, similar in, in a way that it, there's a smell that will remind you of one from the other. So the Bulgari Black had leather, green tea, vanilla, amber, sandalwood, cedar, musk, oak moss, jasmine, bergamot, and rose, whereas Luna Rosa Black from Prada has tonka, amber, musk, angelica, patchouli, bergamot. For me, it's a lot powderier, as I said, with the Bulgari, I'm sorry, with the Prada Luna Rosa Black. I'm getting them mixed up because both of them have the word black in it. But the Prada is a lot powderier, and I think we're getting a lot of powder from the Angelica note, which creates a powdery effect in fragrances, and it's also a bit vegetal. So, But then, the, when you smell them side by side, you'll be reminded of one another. In fact, separately, it's even much more of a reminder of one another, but when you're doing them side by side, you'll be reminded of not identical kind of a thing. But either way, I think... Prada's Lunarosa Black is a great, great alternative to this amazing fragrance from Bulgari called Black, created by Anique Minardo. Let me know if you've uh, compared those two and if you find any similarities. I know some people don't find similarities. I do, but every nose is different. And this one seems to be coming up quite often as well. This is Louis Vuitton's Sun Song. I still get asked, it's a shame this was discontinued. Do you have an alternative? And even though I've featured this one as an alternative for Sun Song, I'm just going to do it again because it is coming up frequently. Plus, we're headed towards spring and summer. And I think this is a great fragrance for you if you're kind of savoring your Sun Song. You can find this from Rocha. This is Rocha or the Rocha Citron Soleil. This coloring is very similar as you can see. Bottles. It's basically orange blossoms, citron, and musk with the Sun Song. And with Eau de Rocha Citron Soleil, it's lemons, orange blossom, neroli, watery notes, white musk, fig leaves, and wood. So very much wearing similarly. I find them to be also performing similarly. In the end, it was a very fresh fragrance focusing on the citrus floral notes and musk. And here we've got the Eau de Rocha Citron Soleil with a little bit more substance. There's some more things happening with it. But in the end, when you compare them side by side, they'll remind you of one another. And further away from one another, it'll be like, oh my God, are you wearing Sun Song kind of a thing. So I don't know why Sun Song got discontinued. Maybe they weren't selling. Maybe they're not very popular styles. But here with the Rocha's Eau de Rocha Citron Soleil, it's a great alternative to Sun Song by Louis Vuitton. Let me know if you've compared those two fragrances. Put a comment down below. And then last but not least, I've got two fragrances here that I know are discontinued or on their way out, and I've got a great alternative for it. We've got Dior's Feb Delicious and Guerlain's Tonka Imperial. Both of them Tonka bombs. 
Bois Doré from Van Cleef and Arpel still selling and at the discounters, it's a great alternative. They're not identical, but focusing on tonka beans. So let me tell you a little bit about Feb Delicious. I found out recently when I was in Paris that this is on its way out over there as well. Originally, it was pulled from the USA and it was made into one of the, the fragrances at the Paris Dior Privé fragrance boutiques where they have, you know, the stash of fragrances that are only selling there. Now, all the originals are gone, like Vetiver, Mitza, Leather Oud, uh, Granville, all of those, uh, Kirkanage, they're all gone, no more. And a few of the recent pullings from the USA are there, but the associates said these, they don't have a lot of stock left. They are going to be completely discontinued. So Feb Delicious, one of my favorites, is now no longer discontinued. And then also Tonka Imperial got recently discontinued also. Both of them, LVMH brands, they're kind of like getting away from the Tonka business or something. Maybe there was something in the notes that they're discontinuing both of these Tonka fragrances. If you guys know, let me know. Put a comment down below so I can find out if Tonka beans are kind of uh, on the banned list by IFRA. I, I don't know what's going on, but on the other hand, we still have Van Cleef and Arpel's Bois Doré created by uh, Fabrice Pellegrin. This is Tonka Vanilla Tobacco Teakwood Musk Black Pepper Cedar and Mineral Notes. I think what you're going to get from this particular fragrance is you're going to get the vanillic and nutty Tonka touches that are going to remind you of both Feb Delicious and also Tonka Imperial. Both of these are Tonka focused. All three of them, I should say, are Tonka focused, but they are going to smell different. Even between Feb Delicious and also Tonka Imperial, I get differences. But in the end, when you focus on the Tonka, you'll be reminded of one and the other. But sadly, these are gone. No more. Sadly, they're really gone. And I, I'm, I'm really, really disappointed that they're gone. But we do have some Tonka fragrances out there that will uh, replicate or replace those. And I think uh, Bois Doré will be a great alternative for Feb Delicious and also Tonka Imperial. Stay tuned for a long format video of great alternatives for these two fragrances where I'm going to highlight a bunch more Tonka bean focused fragrances that'll remind you of Feb Delicious and Tonka Imperial. But for the meantime, definitely Bois Doré from the House of Van Cleef and Arpel in their La, La Collection Extraordinaire collection fragrances. Anyway, those are the great alternatives that I have for you for these uh, hard to find or discontinued fragrances. Let me know if you have other alternatives, uh, alternatives to the fragrances that are discontinued or hard to find. Put a comment down below so I can find out. And also, if, you, if there's anything else out there that's discontinued, and do you have a great alternative for it? P let me know. Put a comment down so I can find out, so I can compare as well. I don't have access to every single fragrance, and sometimes I miss certain fragrances, and I'm always on the lookout for great alternatives for a discontinued fragrance that I can tell the world about by doing a video. So if you know of any discontinued fragrances and there's a great alternative for it, please put a comment down below so I can find out and everybody else can find out as well. Anyway, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.